Hello and welcome to Pixarize the Scene on McArdle Disease, part of our playlist on the glycogen storage disorders. In this image, we'll cover everything you need to know about this disease, including its pathological cause, its inheritance patterns, and its clinical presentation. So what do you think of when you hear the word McArdle? Hurdles? I thought so. The setting for this scene is a track meet, where participants are jumping over hurdles. Let's check out the competition. First, take a look at these small smart cars parked outside the stadium. Small automobiles like these smart cars are a recurring symbol for autosomal recessive inheritance. One of the most common ways you may be tested about this disease goes something like this. Given a father with symptoms of McArdle disease, what is the probability of a future child being a carrier for this disease? These small smart cars should help you remember that McArdle disease is inherited in an autosomal recessive pattern. Next, take a look at these refreshments set out for our hurdlers. See the boxes of sugar? I guess the hurdlers are trying to carbo-load before their race. Boxes and sacks storing sugar are Pixarize's recurring symbol for glycogen, which similarly stores sugar for later use by the body. These boxes of sugar are here to help you remember that McArdle disease is a glycogen storage disorder. McArdle disease is sometimes called type 5 glycogen storage disorder, which is why we've drawn this beehive attached to this pole. Get it? Hive for five? Afterwards, check out these packets of sugar from these boxes. These packets of sugar are in long strips because they haven't been pre-cut into individual packets and instead require the hurdlers to cut each packet using scissors. But there's a problem here. The scissors needed to cut the sugar packets off one by one are now broken. McArdle disease results from a defect in glycogen phosphorylase, also called myophosphorylase, in skeletal muscle, which normally functions to remove glucose residues one at a time from glycogen, just like these scissors. As a result, glycogen builds up in muscle, leading to the signs and symptoms of the disease. Now let's shift gears and talk about these clinical findings. First, take a look at this runner suffering from a leg cramp, clutching his leg in pain. We've drawn this here to help you remember that patients with McArdle disease develop painful muscle cramps when they exercise. This makes sense because your muscles normally break down glycogen into glucose to provide the energy needed in early exercise before increased blood flow could deliver more nutrients to the muscle. Just remember our hurdler with his painful cramp and you'll never forget the painful muscle cramps that are present in McArdle disease. Next, take a look at our refreshments area, where red sports drinks have been provided for the hurdlers. Notice this mischievous boy squeezing a bottle as if he's peeing out red urine. This picture should help you remember the myoglobin urea and red urine seen in patients with McArdle disease, resulting from skeletal muscle injury. Afterwards, this picture should help you remember the myoglobin urea and red urine seen in patients as a result of myoglobin being released from skeletal muscle injury. Afterwards, check out the stadium jumbotron. See that static and squiggly line? We've drawn this here to help you remember the arrhythmia that develops in McArdle disease. This should make sense since the death of skeletal muscle causes many electrolyte changes inside the blood. These changes, especially the increase in blood potassium, result in increased excitability of cardiomyocytes leading to arrhythmias. The last clinical finding you should know in McArdle disease is symbolized by this hurdler captured at two different moments. Notice how the first time point shows her being exhausted and out of breath, while the second time point has her energetic and jumping with the breeze behind her. You could even say that she had caught a second wind. One of the most classic findings of McArdle disease that you should know is the second wind phenomenon which refers to a sharp improvement in muscle performance with continued exercise. You now know that glycogen breakdown provides most of the energy needed in the first few minutes of exercise before increased blood flow from the heart eventually compensates. In patients with McArdle disease, the cardiac response to exercise remains intact. And this is important because it means that while early exercise in patients with McArdle disease is crampy and exhausting, Increased blood flow with continued exercise leads to a dramatic improvement in symptoms. This makes for a really unique presentation, one that you should know for your exams. Just remember our hurdler being recharged, and you'll never forget the second wind phenomenon in McArdle disease. And that's it for this disease. Just remember our broken scissors for deficient glycogen phosphorylase. 
our cramping man for painful muscle cramps, and our rejuvenated hurdler for the second wind phenomenon. We'll see you next time.